Hey there, hey there. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, we there's a lot of people rolling in right now, so I'm going to give you uh, get get another minute here, and then we'll, we'll get things started. Uh, do me a favor though. Obviously, I want to make sure that you can uh, both see me and hear me. Okay, give me a one in the chat. Go ahead and open up your chat box there. Give me a one. Let me know that you can hear me clearly. Sweet. I love that kind of feedback. Appreciate you. Thank you. All righty, man, we're just rolling in. See a lot of familiar faces. Fantastic. Give me a, um, uh, in the chat box, put new if you've never been to one of my workshops before. I'm always kind of curious as far as like what new bodies are coming in. Wow. It's a lot more than I expected. Sweet. Well, welcome. Nice. Well, hopefully you get a lot out of this. Um, I certainly, uh, my, myself and my team put a lot of effort into trying to put together some good education. And if you've been following me, usually I'm doing this every couple of weeks, trying to make sure that I am educating, educating you on what is working now in advertising on Amazon. And of course, some of my other uh, tricks of the trade. I've been doing this a while, so uh, we know what works. And that's part of the content that we bring together. A lot, a lot of the ones that you've seen recently, of course, have been uh, on re related to Prime Day and, uh, you know, getting ready for Black Friday. And of course, there's Q4 and all the craziness is, that's been going on lately. So hopefully you've gotten a chance to catch some of those. We only keep the recordings or basically the replay up for a week. So if you if you miss it, then obviously there, there's a there's a chance uh, if you miss the live event to see uh, to catch the replay. Uh, but it's only good for, you know, for the remainder of that week. That's typically all that we do. So um, keep that in mind on future ones uh, as you can try to join. Hopefully everybody's on a decent time zone. I know that some of you are passionate enough about your own business that you are here at three o'clock in the morning. And I love to see that. That is the, that's the true entrepreneur spirit. So yeah, it's in pretty early here. <laughs> Who's, who's got the worst time right now? <laughs> I was up at 4 a.m. this morning, actually. So, uh, but but that was that was my own fault, not because I was in a different time zone. <laughs> Muhammad out of Australia, 5 a.m. Yes, that's awesome. 4, 2 a.m. Philippines, 5 a.m. Big yawn. Yes, exactly. Grab the coffee, right? All right. So let me go ahead and uh, get things going here. Um, I think we've kind of it's starting to level off. We'll still get another probably 10 people that'll roll in in the next few minutes. Uh, that's their problem, right? <laughs> You're here, so let's get it moving. So, um, <laughs> let me share my screen. Dun, dun, dun. Oops, hold on. It is not quite doing what I expected to do. All right, let me stop the share here and try to get it right first. Ah, there we go. Okay, all right. Just a slight technical issue. Thanks for your patience on this. I will uh, get this moved around to my second screen and we will be good to go. Um, all right, now let's try this. All right, so give me a, give me a big fat one if you can see my screen. You should see a title screen, Ryan, that says three PPC optimization steps to immediately cut wasted ad spend. Um, as I've uh, mentioned to, to a number of you, kind of teased it, uh, I'm actually going to, normally my, what I kind of do is I like to throw in some, some extra items uh, at the end, basically, um, you know, of course, I've got to get through like things like sponsorship and that kind of stuff, but I'm going to get into the workshop content so that you got some notes and you can take it and run, right? Uh, there's usually some additional resources and that kind of stuff that I will throw out there just so you can have some other action items to, to take away. And uh, some of you probably joined specifically because I was going to talk about the new uh, ad placement uh, that you can target within Ad Console um, for um, what they call the, the top stripe. 
uh, ad position. So I was going to touch on that after I get through this content. So I appreciate your patience and sticking around for that. That is a little bit more advanced. Um, a lot of what I'm talking about today as far as the three PPC optimization steps, I'm going to go back to basics today. And I'm going to be talking about um, the three PPC optimization steps to cut waste ad spend, of course. Uh, and this is primarily, I'm going to focus specifically on fine tuning, fine tuning, get my English correct, fine tuning your keyword bidding strategy. Okay. So it's going to be a very narrow topic, which means I'm going to go fast. We're not going to be on here for very long. Um, I'm going to wrap up with some Q and A and uh, some announcements, of course. Um, and then also, uh, of course, talking about that, uh, the, the, the top Stripe ad placement and how to actually get that. So that is one of the things that um, uh, I'll touch on here once, uh, once I get through uh, this quick set of content of the workshop portion. Uh, all right, so before I jump into this, uh, actually, no, let me kind of let, let me get past the title slide and then I'll, then I'll talk about announcements and that kind of stuff. So um, to give you a little context, so these are, uh, basically the three steps in larger PPC optimization, um, in a much larger PPC optimization method that, of course, that I teach, that I've developed over the years. Um, I know that my own agency team has a massive process that is uh, a, a huge compared to what I'm showing today, but these are the absolute most critical three optimizations that if you're not already doing it, um, then I've seen this where uh, I've seen beginners, I've seen intermediate, I've seen advanced sellers, experienced sellers forget to do these kinds of things, these kinds of items. They kind of neglect some of these kind of optimizations. So this is kind of a back to basics. Uh, and I'm going to tell you as far as like why it is critical, of course, right? So when I first rolled out the basic optimization steps, I rolled it out with my software PPC scope uh, four years ago, I guess it was. And back then it was eight steps. And then it was nine, then it was 10, and then it was 17. Um, and now of course I've got, you know, things like a whole course, I've got, you know, <laughs> all the software to back it up, a full ad agency uh, to back all that up. And so it's definitely ballooned and grown. And of course, Amazon continues to evolve. Um, give, me, give me a five in the chat if you have uh, kind of struggled with keeping up with all the ad changes that Amazon has made uh, in the past year. It's been a lot. And I, I tell you, it's a full-time job. So uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, no, exactly. Good. Then you're in the right place because these kinds of workshops, um, if you haven't been with me before, I, I think hopefully you'll find it. Uh, you'll want to come back. And obviously that means we kind of need to get started, right? So enough chit chat for me. Let me move forward here. Um, the idea behind this, of course, is these are some basic elements that you should be doing on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, in order to reduce a cost, uh, save some money. Uh, this is especially critical when we are between uh, events like Prime Day going into Black Friday. Uh, it is very volatile this fourth quarter, as I've talked about in my recent webinars, my recent workshops, I should say. Um, and so let me kind of jump forward here. All right. Um, as far as questions go, I am going to save most of the questions for the end, if you don't mind. So I'm going to go ahead and just power through this. That way I'm going to go fast. You can take screenshots, you can take notes, uh, but I just don't like walk away too long. Otherwise you'll, you'll probably miss it. But before I get into this, all right, let me kind of give me a quick introduction here. I'll introduce myself. Um, one of the things that so so for many of you who've been in, you know kind of like been in my my circle of friends here for the last few years, um, I am the founder of the Facebook group, the Amazon PPC Troubleshooting. We are over twenty thousand sellers strong now, which is fantastic. I love you all. Um, I'm also the uh, co-founder of a number number of other related Amazon advertising uh, companies, including the original ad management software, uh, PPC Scope. Some of you were original founding members of that uh, some four, four and a half years ago now. And of course, um, I also founded the co-founded the Sponsored Products Academy, which of course is the professional uh, Amazon advertising training academy. We're actually on the third version 
currently. So we, we keep that um, updated and active each year. So that's constantly evolving. Thanks, Amazon, for changing, moving the bar all the time. Um, I'm also, of course, co-founder for the Done For You Ad Agency Canopy Management. Now, Canopy Management generally works with uh, the uh, the mid-tier and the high-tier uh, brands on Amazon, some of the bigger players, right? And so that gives us a unique perspective of how things uh, work in larger operations that you might want to be scaling to. Maybe you're already at that level, um, but I've got a bit, bit of a mix for, for a lot of these things, but I also want to throw in something here next, uh, a couple of things um, that I think that is going to benefit for some of you who maybe have talked to my agency team in the past and maybe your, your brand, you weren't quite there yet. I've got something for you today. So I'll throw that in there just as part of the sponsorship uh, piece of this. And then we'll get started with the workshop. Um, my awesome admin team, they reminded me to, uh, to announce to you, of course, uh, that I have been nominated, actually, we've been nominated for a number for across multiple categories for seller poll. Um, put a one in the chat if, you, if you're familiar with seller poll. Seller poll is the annual uh, Amazon voting uh, for, that is put on by Danny McMillan, a friend of mine. Um, and I am fortunate to have each of these items, the Facebook group, uh, the, the software, the, the academy, the, uh, the agency, um, and of course, just myself as a coach and consultant in the advertising space. That's what I live and breathe. Uh, my two areas, of course, are advertising strategy and also conversion rate optimization. I love buyer psychology and trying to make sure that that we're, we're standing out, we're manipulating that uh, in a way that is beneficial to us. I'm actually going to have a workshop. I'm going to plan on having a workshop just on that topic when it comes to uh, differentiating your product so that you can stand out even if you're in a competitive space. So hopefully that is something that you guys would be interested in doing because I'm passionate about it. Hopefully you kind of hear that in my voice. Uh, so that's something I want to do uh, soon here. So um I'm actually going to uh, throw that over to uh, uh, to one of my team, to Alexandria, to uh, help me set that one up. But yes, uh, so Alex actually put in the link into chat seller poll. Thank you for that. Um, if you have a moment today, I would really love to uh, appreciate your vote. Um, you'll see for there's multiple categories that I've been nominated or one of my companies that I've talked about here have been nominated in. I would love your vote. It's appreciated. It always just kind of uh, is is a good feedback, good reward for just being out there and just giving constantly. So thank you. Appreciate that. All right. So let's get going here. Um, one of the things, uh, let's go ahead and take care of uh, the sponsorship for this training workshop. Really quick, we'll get through it fast and we'll get into the dirt. Okay. So um, I'm going to take a quick minute here and just talk about, um, so this workshop that I'm doing today is sponsored by PPC Scope Human Intelligence, okay? Or what we call also is PPC Scope HI. Now, this is the answer to the problem that I was just talking about a little bit earlier, and that is um, that we've seen a lot with sellers, and that is they go with the PPC management agency um, that tends to, or even software that tends to rely heavily on artificial intelligence, and then they kind of get bit because there's it's not a full thing, right? What usually happens is that the algorithm algorithm either misses um, something, you know, basically misses some kind of optimization, or even worse, what we most commonly see is the developers of the software were not seasoned ad strategists and professionals, um, and so the the strategy either they don't support the new ad types, they don't support a, a solid strategy. They you tend to narrow it down considerably, so that it is so restrictive that you could have just done it yourself, right? Um, and so what usually ends up happening, what we hear the most about is they try out some software that is using that is you know AI uh, advertised, and they end up losing some money because the ad strategy is not thought out, right? There's some missed opportunities, there's some wasted ad spend, that kind of stuff. Um, we do certainly hear stories where, where it works great, but it's usually focused on certain ad types that work great. So um, what we have here with PPC Scope Human Intelligence, or what we call PPC Scope HI, 
is I actually have a team of ad specialists. Actually, I've got multiple teams of ad specialists with my agency, but we've peeled off one of our uh, one of our A team in order to. Uh, these are ones. These are uh, ad specialists that I've personally trained and that I oversee. And what this service does, that PPC Scope Human Intelligence, is it analyzes, or they analyze, not the software, but they, my team, analyzes and manages everything that happens to your. PPC campaigns. So give me a two if that is uh, if that is something that sounds like you'd be interested in. I can certainly bring it up after the workshop and talk a little bit more about that. But this is something that uh, you're not relying on whether or not the software is built correctly. Rather, there's a real person, human intelligence, right? Someone who has the experience and the knowledge that I have uh, basically helped them to get uh, can see the whole picture, can use the, not just technical analysis, but contextual analysis, which is just as critical as just being able to look at the numbers, right? And being able to optimize your campaigns to bring you the best possible results. So I'm excited to roll out PPC Scope HI today. Um, and hopefully that I uh, appreciate your, your time on that now. Who's ready to get started on the training workshop? <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving then. All right. So what are we talking about today? So these are, um, I'm going to adjust my screen here a little bit because I've got the Zoom window. You know how the, the Zoom controls always kind of get in the way of things, right? So let me clean that up a little bit there. Awesome. There we go. All right. So. What are we talking about then? Okay, so these are the three steps that we're focusing on today. I'm gonna to show you how to identify the underperforming keywords, uh, eliminate the wasted ad spend on keywords that are irrelevant to your target audience, which a lot of uh, people, a lot of training, they just don't do, they don't realize that they should be doing it. And ultimately how to reduce the high A costs on unprofitable keywords. Seems pretty simple, but this is a back to basics uh, workshop, right? Um, as you can see, there are a few ways that you can go wrong with your keywords. So each one requires a different approach to fix it. So uh, before we get into that, um, let's go, let's get into the right mindset on this one. So um, the mindset that I always have people focus on is profitability. Amazon constantly is going to be advertising to you saying, hey, you need to get more awareness and more, you need to increase your, your budget and your spend and everything. Well, that benefits them. <laughs> it benefits the shareholder. Ultimately though, as business owners, as brand owners, I'm a brand owner myself, um, as, as an agency also, that we also, we wanna make sure that we're focusing on profitability because ultimately it is the cash flow from our profitability that allows us to expand the uh, our product lines right so um the very common mistake that i hear from sellers i coach or who partner with canopy uh when we first start talking to them, is that they've thought they've been kind of trained by uh, amazon and the community that advertising is simply just a cost of doing business uh, they think that they're supposed to lose money on their advertising uh, for the sake of just having their their ads run out there uh, so they tend to let it slide they are they a little bit too they let it go a little bit too long here without actually getting control over it um, and their ads aren't as profitable as they could be and that usually causes stress to a startup brand Who, who's who's felt that stress before of like oh man my a cost is just killing me and i don't know how to get control of this thing yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't I wasn't expecting that many. <laughs> yes, especially recently. It has been wild the past. Thank you for saying that. Um, the last couple of weeks, the last couple of months have been really volatile. Obviously, we're in a very unique year and a lot of things have shifted. We've got problems with logistics. Amazon's making algorithm changes. Um Usually they're not. We usually overstate that they're making an algorithm change and usually it's a bug or something like that. But there's been a lot of things when it comes to listing and indexing and advertising visibility and all these things. And what that causes, not only does it cause some frustration to you because like, hey, how come my ads aren't running? How come I'm not ranked as well? But the psychology, which makes it compounds the problem, makes it worse, is that a lot of sellers, not you, but other <laughs> brand owners, other sellers, they start panicking and they start saying, well, I need to increase my budget, increase my bid because my ads aren't showing. They panic in the wrong direction. So you got to sidestep the foolishness and uh, starting with these three basic items, okay? So 
let me talk about a couple of basics here. Um, the first thing, of course, that I tell my students is always to identify their advertising objective. If you don't know why you're doing the advertising, you should not be advertising flat out, right? If you think it's just like, oh, just turn on the switch and sales just magically come and I rank on page one. Well, welcome to the game. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so um, you need to know why you're doing the advertising. Now, here's the most here's the most common four that I start with. There's other objectives. There's other tactics. There's many other strategies that are available. Um, it is, uh, it's kind of like religion, not, you know, like, like there's some overlap and everybody's got different opinions and, and a lot of things work and a lot of things don't work. So let me get you focused on what absolutely does work. So um, you've got launch, of course, which is a very common one. We are introducing a new product and that is primarily to increase sales velocity in the initial days, initial weeks of a new product to help increase a new product's visibility on the Amazon search, what we call a product launch, right? Number two is targeting. In other words, we're targeting the audience we want to get in front of, right? We identify the product's target audience to refine the product listing content. Now, this means we are looking to focus our product listing content to increase relevance, which Amazon rewards us by saying, look, Amazon is basically looking at us and saying, Mr. or Ms. Seller, you have tuned and focused your product product listing and your advertising to focus in on a sp very specific audience. I'm going to reward you by showing your ad more visibly, by showing your product ranking more visibly. I'm going to index your product listing for individual keywords because you're not simply just saying, well, everybody wants my product. No, no, no. This is where you're identifying specifically what that is. And that means that for a separate workshop, the keyword research needs to be manually reviewed to make sure that it is directly relevant to your product and to your target audience. You're not simply just shotgunning and just relying on a keyword research tool to give you the answers. Don't be lazy like that. Don't just accept what a tool gives you. Make sure that there's some human interaction in there, either yourself or you know, I've always got my team. That's obviously what I train them to do. That's where the contextual analysis makes a huge difference, right? Because it's absolutely needed. We used to not need that. You know, a couple of years ago, you could just do technical analysis and say, well, this number means this. And so it makes this change. Now it's a lot more competitive, which means you got to step up your game, right? Ultimately, steps three and four, the break even or profit are where we're aiming to get to. Um, and as we walk through these optimization steps, uh, but I wanted to give you a little context of, of what these the four most common advertising objectives are. There's usually a process and a sequence that we go through here. Um, so these are the additional strategies. That, I mean, I'm sorry, there are additional strategies, I spoke there, um, to achieve other goals. But these are the fundamentals we're going to be talking about today um, as part of this. And this is something that even seasoned sellers miss. So if you're thinking it's like, I don't really have an advertising objective, you're not alone. Just, it is a good time to figure it out though, right? <laughs> All right. So um, this presentation is going to, this workshop basically uh, is going to deal primarily with keywords. So I'm going to be talking a quick minute to make sure everyone's on the same page with the term terminology that I'll be using, right? So when it comes to search terms, of course, uh, many of you are familiar with the difference of search terms and keywords, but to kind of reiterate this, just kind of back to basics, right? The search terms are the word or the phrase a shopper used uses to search for a product on Amazon, right? It makes sense. That's what the, our audience is using. The keyword is what we as a brand owner are using in order to help Amazon match up our product ads with that shopper's search term, okay? So the keyword, of course, is the word or phrase that we bid upon uh, by the seller in sponsored advertising. Now there's other targets available, right? You can do product targeting, category targeting, that kind of stuff, right? But we're focused on keywords today, right? Um, multiple search terms, of course, may be matched to a single keyword, including exact match, which is a commonly misunderstood rule. I'll touch on that here in a second. Um, yes, okay. Um, oh, that is something, kind of a clarification, a very common question I get is, um, I'm not running an ad on this particular keyword. How come it's showing an ad, you know, showing an ad? Well, that's because uh, the way that Amazon matches up ads to search and to audience, um, what their what their behavior is, 
uh, the search terms you appear for, for as your ads, are not necessarily uh, the keywords that you're bidding on. So that is a, just a good, good rule of thumb to know. Um, I love the questions. Um, I will go ahead and get to those um, uh, a little bit later on. I think I'm going to cover some of that here. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and catch you up on that one. Cool. Thank you for the question there. Um, all right. So as far as keyword optimization, schedule and timing. All right. So um, this process, <laughs> kind of a disclaimer, I guess, this process requires two things, right? patience and consistency, which probably none of us as entrepreneurs really have. <laughs> uh, we want to go fast. We want to just charge into this and we want to get it done um, and just brute force. And sometimes this is something that is a process that we need to learn and then potentially hand off at some point. But I do recommend that you be patient. The earliest you should be optimizing a brand new campaign is one week after launch. Um, and then 60 days, typically the standard kind of reporting period that Amazon gives us with keywords, you can technically do 90 days, but I think 60 days is still a good uh, frame, uh, whether you're doing search term optimization or keyword optimization, 60 days is a good kind of a long-term view of kind of the date range that's going to give you a good enough perspective in order to make some changes to your optimization to make your ads run more efficiently. Um, ultimately, you want to be consistent on this. Tempo, regular timing, don't, don't skip it for a month and then do, do three days in a row, nothing like that. Try to just, you know, find time to do it on a weekly basis if you can. So by consistency, I mean, Amazon, of course, is not a set it and forget it uh, process. It is a weekly process. Um, and it is normal to see smaller and smaller improvements week after week because your optimizations are taking effect. You're gonna, it's going to get better over time is what I'm saying on this. So, um, but don't stop it uh, <laughs> when you start seeing the results, right? All right. So keep moving here. I told you, I was, am I moving fast enough or am I moving too fast? Let me know. Say too fast or uh, too slow. Give me commit to one side or the other. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty, right? I don't know if any of you are Nacho Libre fans, but into the nitty gritty uh, details. To do the steps that we're going to be talking about today, uh, you're going to need your keyword report, also known as the targets report within the ad console advertising reports. So I want to show you where we're going to focus on with this report. Now, Amazon doesn't calculate the conversion rate, but it is something I'm very passionate about. I usually lead with conversion rate and click-through rate of any kind of targets, whether it's a search term, it's a keyword, it's a, uh, actually a target would be a keyword or a product or a category. Um, in this case here, things like impressions, critical metric, clicks. The relationship between clicks and impressions, the click-through rate is how well does your ad engage that audience that is searching for a product like yours? Are you, uh, if you've got a very low click-through rate, common question that I always get is, What's an acceptable click-through rate? Generally, what I say is, um, assuming that you've got at least a thousand impressions, a, a, a standard click-through rate that we see is maybe a 0.4% up to you know two percent, right? Uh, branded terms, like if it's your own brand, uh, branded terms typically have a, a much higher click-through rate, five to ten percent in some cases. Um, the the one that I want you to focus on and I want you to take away, if you're not already familiar, is what is on the low side that says that you're missing your audience. And that would be a click-through rate. Click-through rate is clicks divided by impressions. A click-through rate of less than 0.2% is pretty much a guarantee that you are missing your audience, okay? That you're, that's not, your ads are not focused on your target audience well because they, your ad is showing, but your, your audience is looking at this saying, that ad is not relevant to what my mindset is, what I'm going after, okay? So just be aware of that, the 0.2% as far as a click-through rate. Now, again, to be statistically significant, you wanna make sure that the impressions that you're looking at is at least a thousand impressions, right? Just to just kind of, it's not a guarantee of, of accuracy, but if you're doing something you're looking at, it's like, well, I've got a 15% click-through rate and you've got 200 impressions, it's skewed pretty badly, right? So don't, don't look at that. But in cases where you've got at least a thousand impressions, if your click-through rate is dangerously low, below 2.2%, then that says that you need to reconsider the audience that you're going after and maybe the keywords you've chosen, 
because something is not right. One of the things I'll tell you, it's not on the slide, but I'm gonna add this in here. Here's a pro tip for you, okay? Uh, you can't screenshot this because I'm just gonna tell you, so listen up. <laughs> a pro tip is if you are seeing individual keywords that have an extremely low click-through rate, take the time, search on Amazon with that keyword. You may have done, you picked up a keyword uh, during your, your keyword research process. You said, okay, that's relevant, but you didn't take the time to look at every single keyword, right? That's not really that practical. But if you see a keyword that has an extremely low click-through rate, search on Amazon and see what comes back. Are the products that come back just like your product or is there a mix of other products that you may not even consider that are unrelated to your product or is it even in some cases a complete miss? Here's an example on that. And this is more um, timely this year is historically, if somebody searched on Amazon for face mask, they were looking for a beauty item, right? You know, you know the, the chemical peel or whatever it is. I, obviously, I don't, I, I'm, clearly I'm not even the one who's using the face mask, but face masks were generally more of a, uh, a beauty item. If somebody wants to help me clarify the terminology there, um, that is the kind of products you'd be getting back. You'd have things, you know, from Avena and, you know, all these brands that have, you know, beauty products, right? Well, of course, this year, what do you get? You get all kinds of like, like surgical masks and, um, you know, uh, and sneeze guards and all these kinds of things that come back for face masks. So uh, what you may have uh, been previously targeting has completely changed in an instant. Um, so if you have a click, if you have a keyword that has an extremely low click through rate and it's confusing, it's like, wait a minute, that's relevant to my product. Just search on Amazon, see what comes back. Maybe that particular keyword is a miss to your audience and you can remove it. Okay, <laughs> keep it a moving here. And, and I've got, I've got a lot. Yeah, I appreciate the questions, the comments. That is fantastic. I, I'm, not, I'm trying not to let it distract me because otherwise I'll go on tangents and and I want to get through this fast, right? I'm sure you do too. Um, I love the fact that we keep on having that our audience uh, that are, that is on this call continues to grow and grow and grow <laughs> throughout this. So welcome. Um, all right. So first one. I do recommend optimizing your search terms prior to optimizing keywords. Uh, since this workshop is focused on keyword optimization, the first thing we're gonna be looking at here in that, is that uh, in that keyword report is our underperforming keywords. So if you recall back on this one here, if you're looking at the, the keyword or the targeting report, you've got your targets, which are your keywords, and you have things like different match types, but you have your different metrics. Um, we are going to be looking at the metrics that show up here as far as the impressions, the clicks, click-through rate, um, the, uh, the, the cost per click or the CPC. Um, your bid is not something that is going to come up inside of a keyword or a targets report. That is something you'll have to take a look at within your campaign or your ad group more specifically to see what the actual current bid is to have a good idea of that. But you can usually, most of the, what I'm going to teach you here as far as the calculations are going to be based off of things like click-through rate and number of clicks relative to impressions and a uh, number of orders. So you've got the data that you need to hear. Uh, conversion rate is something I also recommend, which is the advertised conversion rate is orders divided by clicks. Amazon doesn't calculate that for you. If you export this file to Excel or whatever, uh, Google Sheets or something like that, you can easily do that calculation inside of inside the, the worksheet, right? So, um, all right. So, <laughs> but kind of back to this slide here is our goal here is to reduce the current bid on keywords, not producing sales to the point where ads no longer show. Pretty obvious, makes sense, right? But let's talk about some of the mechanics on this. This is essentially an elimination step for keywords that qualify. In other words, if it qualifies, it means it's not doing us any good. And therefore we can get rid of it and we can move on. Don't try to uh, chase sales thinking it's like, well, if I just wait longer then it's gonna pay off and I don't wanna miss a, a remote opportunity for a sale on this. You're gonna get eaten alive by, you know, you've, you've heard the term death by a thousand cuts. Um, you want to make sure that you're looking at these three things so that you don't just add up a bunch of ad spend across things that you could have eliminated early that, yeah, you might miss a sale here and there, but ultimately you need to make sure you're focusing your ads on what is performing well for your product. And that's, that's the key message there. Okay. 
Okay, so the first one in this is underperforming keywords, okay? This is simply just, um, what do I consider underperforming is, uh, I'll do a filter on that keyword or that targets worksheet, and I will look at which keywords have at least five clicks, right? In this case, I'm gonna make an exception of like, you don't have to have as many, you don't have to have that 1000 impression minimum rule. The, if you have enough clicks that overrides the, the minimum impressions. But in this case here, the standard that I say is minimum of five clicks. Now, down there, you're gonna see a pro tip there that talks about calculated. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, because you can be more accurate in the number of clicks that you use to trigger whether or not you optimize or adjust the bid on a specific keyword uh, based on its performance. But the combination here in your filter is you look at filter it to show the keywords that have at least five clicks and have zero sales or zero orders is something else I'll also use. Now I do put in a caution on each one of these. Um, and that is, um, in, in this one here, I actually say it's like, you know, talk about pausing or adjusting the bid if it doesn't have enough metrics, right? That's kind of where I was saying, if you got a five clicks and you've got zero sales, you're, you're focused correctly, right? You don't have to worry about the, the caution, right? I actually have some other cautions I'll, I'll add in here later on. The pro tip though, the better way of doing this is going to be based on the conversion rate of your product. In other words, you could set the minimum clicks instead of a minimum of five clicks. You might come in and say, well, uh, I've got a 10% conversion rate, my, my, like my say my unit session percentage. And again, this goes back, you remember earlier, um, I happened to catch, uh, Nicole, your, um, uh, your, your question there, um, the, uh, the shiny object here, squirrel. Um, if you recall earlier, I said, try to focus on, on it's gotta be at least a week. Ideally, you're looking at 60 days. Don't wait 60 days to have 60 days of data to start optimizing a new campaign. But I would say, you know, wait a week and, and then start doing it. But ideally you're looking normally, if you've got 60 days of data, be looking at 60 days of data. That way you've got a bigger picture and you can kind of have that cumulative uh, effect of five clicks. Now, if, so, if a keyword has reached five clicks or, or the minimum clicks that I'll talk about in the pro tip and has not converted, uh, within a week or within a year, you know, it's, it's basically the same result, right? One of the things that um, sometimes we'll, we'll go back and we'll circle back around each quarter uh, within my agency is, or and actually what I teach inside of PPC Scope as well, is sometimes if you've got the long-term data, if you can go in like, like in, in uh, Ad Console, you can't pull a report that's longer than 90 days. Uh, for a keyword or a targets report, but in software like PPC Scope, if you've been on there for a year, you've got a year of data, right? And so what I'll recommend is go back, expand the date out and say, show me all the keyword data for a year and then show me the ones that qualify. Because sometimes what you get, that death by a thousand cuts, sometimes what you'll see is you'll see keywords that only get one click per month and they, if you're looking at a, if you're always looking at a, at a short time span, like 30 days, or if you're at 60 days, you may not see that it's accumulated enough clicks overall across the lifetime or year to date, right? So keep that in mind. That is an additional option. You don't have to do it very often, just kind of periodically, like each quarter, go in and say, let me look at the full year of data. Um, and that way you're going to be, be able to eliminate a number of things. Best time to do that right now, right before, you know, during the, the, the peak season of fourth quarter, so that you eliminate some of the waste going in here, right? Now, the pro tip that I have on this, of course, is the minimum clicks should technically be filtered to, uh, to based off of your conversion rate of your product. If your product's been selling and you have a conversion rate, um, then you can calculate this. If you just launched the product, you're probably not going to have this and just start out with five clicks. It's totally fine. But I like to, like say, if I've been running, I've been selling the product for a while and I'm going in there, I'm using a, a more accurate rule, it would be one divided by the conversion rate of the product. Now you can either use the business report inside of Seller Central, you can use the business report and you'll look at that unit session percentage um, over 30 days, 60 days, whatever time frame you want. Or you can also use the advertised conversion rate, which is orders divided by clicks. Either way, um, that is something that you can do, uh, you know, like PPC scope automatically um, calculates that for you so that you can base it, base those kind of adjustments. But um, it is one divided by that conversion rate. 
here's an example. Let's say I have a product that has a 20% conversion rate. Well, one divided by 20% or 0.2 is five. So that works. So the five clicks works if you have a 20% conversion rate. Well, opposite of that, what if you have a 5% conversion rate? Well, that suggests that you could go clear up to 20 clicks before you could expect to get a sale, which is the ratio, right, of, of a 5% conversion rate. I would not recommend allowing the ad to run for 20 clicks, but it really kind of depends on what the total cost is, what your tolerance is. Uh, usually I say try to cut it off at like 10 to 15 clicks at most, um, unless you've got a really uh, generous pockets to, to, to uh, test with ad spend, then you can go higher. Uh, but generally I say cut it off at you know, 10 to 15 clicks at most, uh, most likely five clicks at a minimum. Um, let's see here. I kind of put in the note there, the pro tip there that um, as far as where to find the unit session percentage. Optionally, you can do, and you'll see why later on in the next slides is, is you can set like a minimum bid of like say uh, 20 cents. And that's the reason for that is uh, because oftentimes if I am reducing the bid on a keyword to eliminate it, I don't pause it. And probably some of you are saying, so why don't you just pause the keyword? I have my reasons. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll drop the bid down to 15 cents and that usually eliminates it from showing the ads in, in a lot of cases. <clears throat> Let me keep moving here and, I'll, and then I'll address that one. Hmm. And yes, that would apply to all, uh, any match type. And that's basically just technical analysis of, of looking at the metrics, right? You should be testing all keyword match types. Um, I am not, a, I'm not a search term or a keyword isolationist um, in practice because I know that there's most of your traffic and some of your sales will come from things like phrase match. And in very competitive situations, broad match actually performs better than phrase or exact. So you kind of have a, to adjust to your environment. Separate workshop <laughs> on that one. Um, all right, so, um, and, and no, you would not actually pause after you reduce the bid. You actually keep that key, that keyword active, and I'll, and I'll share in a minute as far as like why that is. Now, what should you do in cases where something qualifies here for like say the minimum number of clicks and zero sales? That one is suggesting it's not going to convert, even if you let it run for another hundred clicks. It's just going to spend your money. It's not going to convert. Just get rid of it, right? Get rid of it early on and reduce the bid down to fifteen cents. One of the other ways you can do this, and this is pretty easy to do inside of PPC Scope, is you can look at the current cost per click and just reduce it by 40%. Um, those kind of, that, that's a little bit more complex, really easy, excuse me, really easy to do inside of software like PPC Scope, um, but you can do it manually, or you can simply just drop it down to 15 cents and just keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it uh, like I usually do. Um, the, the, the caution that I usually have on this is, um, and, and I'll ask you to, to give me a little feedback inside of uh, the chat panel here. Um, holy cow, that, man, the number of people who are on the call just continues to grow. I love it. Thank you for being here. Um, is the caution that applies to any of these. It applies to the, search, the way that Amazon matches up search terms and keywords. The most simple one of that is an example where you may have a very successful plural keyword you know, ends in S, right? A plural keyword. And that one is, it's selling, it's profitable. You got a low A cost, it's doing great. And inside the same ad group, you, you have both a search term, for instance, that is a plural and you have a search term that is a singular, or you have another keyword that's the singular form and you got the plural form. Well, Amazon, uh, lovely, uh, the way they do this is if you change the bid uh, on a singular. In other words, they mix and match things like singular, plural. They also do it technically with things like prepositions and articles and some of these connector and filler words that they come into. But singular and plural is what you're gonna come up with most often. So you kinda wanna be aware that you may be reducing the bid on a, on a non-performing singular keyword, for instance, but you may also have a plural that is, uh, that is still performing. There's some tools within the software that allow you to do that. I know certainly that's part of the process my own team does. Certainly the, the PPC Scope Human Intelligence Service, we definitely take care of that kind of stuff for you. Um, but 
what you're looking for is you're essentially making a decision in those cases. If you have a poor performing or a non-performing singular form and you have a performing plural or vice versa, then you are deciding whether to keep both or to reduce the bid or eliminate both. So you don't really have, you can't pick one or the other. Unfortunately, uh, Amazon doesn't give us that level of granularity. Um, but so it'd be interesting. How many of you were aware of that difference between the single, the way that singulars and plurals are essentially commingled or matched to each other? Give me a Y or a one or something like that in the chat box if you were already aware of that. Give me a zero actually if you were not too. Just so I kind of get a pulse of of uh, how how I am uh, going if I'm going too fast on some of this stuff. So okay, that's good to know. Okay, good mix, good mix, excellent. Um, all right, so the next one, number two. <clears throat> okay. And um, for those of you who, who that new concept, that can be quite confusing the first time. Um, you'll, when you see it in your own example, in your own campaigns, it'll make, it'll make huge sense because you'll end up, you'll find something that's a singular and a plural and you're like, well, I'm just going to eliminate or I'm gonna reduce the bid on a singular form. Um, what happens is the traffic then gets shifted over to a plural keyword and you're just spending the same amount of money again. Um, but it, the way it matches up with search terms, it's a little bit more complex. I, I, can, I can address that as a question at the end here if, I, if we need to clarify that a little bit. But usually it's a case of you have to decide whether to keep both or to eliminate both singular and plural. Um, and it's not simply as just, oh, I'll just move it to a different ad group. So anyway, uh, all these little nuances, right? So the second piece that I want to talk about today is eliminating wasted ad spend on irrelevant keywords. Something that most sellers, most brand owners do not do. They don't realize that they should just eliminate based off of, hey, I've got a really low click-through rate. Um, so here's what we do. We look at this from a standpoint of what makes a keyword irrelevant. And this is essentially what I was talking about before, where you've got a really low click-through rate that's dangerously low, that basically is saying that you're missing your audience. What I was, I was saying about the face mask, for instance, you may be selling a beauty face mask, but everybody, all the results are coming back for, uh, you know, a, a mouse mouth screen face mask, right? A COVID, you know, uh, face mask. And therefore your ad might be showing because you're targeting that keyword, but nobody's clicking on it. And it's just the click through rate is extremely low. So you've got to pivot to different keywords. Uh, I feel bad for those of you who are actually in the beauty category. <laughs> um, one of our brands does uh, millions of dollars in, in beauty each month uh, for our agency. And uh, we certainly have run into a number of those challenges. It can be exciting from a, a geek like me to be able to overcome those kind of challenges. Uh, but at the same time, it is definitely things you know going on right now. Uh, it definitely affects it. So I'm sure that many of you have been affected by uh, changes in the demand for different products this year. Um, as far as irrelevant keywords, though, this is where your keyword, your click-through rate is so low that it's showing that your ad is missing your target audience. And so just you basically need to, you can do that test where you search on Amazon to see what products come back on that particular keyword. And you'll probably see pretty quickly, oh yeah, no, the products that Amazon is showing for this keyword are not the same product that I'm trying to advertise for this keyword. And you've got to take a different path. You've got to use a more descriptive long tail um, uh, keyword and try to target that that is more, more specific to your specific product. Um, from a technical analysis standpoint, the metrics we would look at, of course, is again, looking at the 60 day date range when you've got that available. Um, I recommend minimum a thousand impressions. Well, actually absolutely do a minimum of a thousand impressions on that keyword. It still has zero sales. So you're doing a new filter here and you're, you're basically saying, okay, show me only the keywords that have at least a thousand impressions and yet still have zero sales. So it's a new filter on your, on your keyword or your target um, worksheet. And uh, what you're looking for is those that have a click-through rate of uh, something like a 0.15, something below 0.2%. And in this case here, I use 0.15 is a definite signal that you've missed your audience. And because it's irrelevant, your ad is irrelevant to what their intent, their shopping intent is. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, but that's a pretty easy filter for you to do on that, uh, that worksheet. That is actually um, one of the, the, uh, the common filters that we recommend within PPC scope. And then also my HI team um, implement on and check for you on a regular basis too. Um, 
The bid adjustment on this one, again, reduce it down to 15 cents. Now, since I've already talked about you know, the pro tips and the cautions. I don't want to reiterate that each time. Let me kind of go back and say, why do I reduce the bid on a keyword? Because that was a common question that was coming in. Why do I reduce the bid on a keyword when I could just pause it? The reason for that is if I am going in and doing additional keyword research and I've paused or archived a keyword, then what happens is I lose visibility of that. Because a lot of times we go in, we look at an ad group and say, hey, did I already bid on this keyword? I'm gonna add in a new list of keywords. And I just drop in a new list of keywords. If it's not already active, Amazon does not block it from being added again. If it is paused or archived, Amazon will allow you to drop in that new keyword. You think it's the new keyword, but it's one you've already eliminated as unprofitable. And so you're essentially, you're just starting this process all over again. So one of the things I do is I just reduce the bid low. For those of you who have followed me on other workshops talking about the gold panning campaign, those low, low, low bid uh, campaigns and keywords can sit around for, for you know weeks on end before they actually get clicks, but they get a sale and they get like really low ACoS, but that's a, that's a, different, that's a different workshop there. But the reason I do this primarily is so that you don't repeat the same mistake that, that, was, that you eliminated before right? You optimized that keyword once before and you reduced it down to 15 cents. If you try to add in that same keyword in the future, because you're doing some new keyword research, you're doing some reverse ASIN, you're using a keyword tool and you add in that same keyword, it's going to say, no, 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 this keyword's already here. You're not repeating the same mistake twice and just double spending or triple spending in some cases. Um, and that's why I don't simply just pause the keywords. It's not going to affect your campaign performance by having, you know, a thousand keywords in there versus 15 or versus, you know, two keywords. There's some extreme theories that are out there as far as how campaigns and bid number of uh, keywords works. Um, it's not going to affect, don't worry about it. Um, all right, let's keep moving on here. The third one, we got a pretty good pace here, but let's keep it moving, right? Um, and again, yeah, so that was a question that was asked before, Pearl, is yes, all of these apply to all the keyword match types that you have, right? You're going to look at those individually because Amazon's going to report those separate. You may have the same keyword with three separate um, match types. You may have a broad, a phrase, an exact, right? And each one of those is going to have its own unique performance. Now, if you are familiar with using things like pivot tables, you can start combining those so that you can see a keyword across multiple match types, multiple ad groups, multiple campaigns, so that you get more of a global view. I'm a fan of pivot tables. If you're not familiar with an Excel pivot table, they're actually pretty simple to set up. They're intimidating as hell the first time you do it. But if you just go out to YouTube and you, you, know, you Google the video, you'll see it's like, oh, this is way easier. I should have been doing this the whole time. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but that gives you more of a global view that's not this, this line item like you have in the keyword uh, target report. Yeah, <laughs> pivot tables are life. Yes, Mohamed, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I use them all the time. So uh, definitely worth learning if you, um, even if you hate uh, Excel, I'm not suggesting you build macros or do any kind of coding or anything like that. I'm just suggesting learn a basic pivot table on this kind of a da data and your world will open up as far as what you can see because um, it sees opportunities and a global you know risks that you can optimize for anyway um, <laughs> yeah my team uses them all the time too of course this is the third and the last tip here that we're talking about right reduce high a cost on unprofitable keywords right this is typically the scenario where you've got you're overspending on a keyword and you've got a really high ACoS and you feel like you're bleeding money and it's not tied to a specific goal. The reason I say make that statement is we use um, advertising primarily for an objective in order to, to, to reach a goal for to, to implement a tactic for a reason, not simply just to show, uh, you know, show our product and sell products, but usually because we're trying to increase audience visibility uh, to introduce our product. We are trying to rank a keyword organically and we're trying to increase sales velocity. There's a lot more intermediate and advanced level tactics that are available. And I've talked about on other workshops and will again. Um, and of course I've got plenty of training materials Obviously, my team is the one who's trained up on, on everything from beginning to intermediate to advanced. So they handle all, all that too. Uh, but 
with the exception where you are intentionally trying to overspend and have a high A cost on a specific keyword for the outcome of ranking that keyword, for instance, um, then you're generally going to want to reduce the bid in order to optimize uh, and get the uh, the A cost closer to your break even A cost. So. On unprofitable, when we're looking, this is again, this is, this is the new, a new, another new filter, right? This is the third filter on that, on the uh, the keyword targeting uh, worksheet that you downloaded from Ad Console. So this is a new filter um, on that same you know list of keywords, and you are still looking at maybe a sixty day range, ideally. You are filtering to show at least a thousand impressions. So you're only showing keywords that have at least a thousand impressions. Um, you are also doing something a little bit custom here in a couple of cases here. One is you are filtering to show the A cost, uh, those keywords that have a, an, an A cost, an advertised cost of sale, that is higher than what you've calculated as the break even A cost. Now, I am going to post into chat. a video that I did. I don't want you to look at this right now. I do want you to finish paying attention to the rest of this workshop. Afterwards, um, I, I created a video know, a couple of years ago and it still applies today on how to calculate your break even a cost for your product. Um, if you haven't done that before, there you go. Um, grab that Vimeo link there that's in the chat. You can also find this of course in uh, the Amazon PPC troubleshooting group. We've got a long list of FAQs and that kind of stuff. But what you're doing is you're basically saying, okay, what is so expensive that I'm losing money? So if the A cost, the advertised cost of sale percentage on a keyword is higher than what you've calculated as your break even A cost, your margin for your product, then of course you're losing money. Uh, and usually what you want to try to do is bring that down to you at break even or maybe even a little bit better so you're making a little bit of money, right? If you're trying to continue that sales velocity, but at the same time, you're not bleeding money out of every keyword you're doing. So generally what we do is we're going to reduce, we're not going to reduce it down to 15 cents uh, like we did with the other ones where we were trying to stop the ads on those keywords. What we're just trying to do is adjust the keyword bid. And this is something that's really easy to do inside of PPC Scope. Obviously, like I said, with, with PPC Scope High, uh, my team obviously would do it for you. But this is an opportunity. You can also look at things like uh, what your current bid is. Like if you're looking at a specific, if you use a standard default bid for an ad group, you probably already know what that is. But you're also looking for the case where a bid is greater than your cost per click. Now, the keyword targeting report that you download from Ad Console will not include your bid, right? So unfortunately, that's not going to be available in there, but you may, may happen to know what generally is your break-even bid. That is another way of doing it. Most of the time, most people just say, okay, the, the A cost is higher than my break-even A cost and adjust from there. But you want to know what that cost per click is because you're actually going to adjust that here. Um, you would adjust... I like, what I like to do is, and this is kind of an arbitrary number, right? I like to set the bid 20% below the current cost per click. What that means is, for instance, if you've got a current bid on your keyword that's a dollar and the current CPC that you're actually realizing from your advertising is only 80 cents, um, then what you're doing is you're taking that cost per click of 80 cents and you're reducing that by 20%. Now, some people are less aggressive more conservative and they go 10%, you know, they just, they kind of inch it down to see what it does. Some people are way more aggressive. If you got something that's a 500% A cost, you're probably going to go more than 20%, right? So use your gut to say, I need to reduce this quickly because it is converting, but it's converting way too expensive. I'm going to drive it down faster. But I recommend as a general rule of thumb, simply just take your current cost per click and reduce it by 20%, let it sit, let it basically cook for a week or two and see how that changes. Now, if you're looking at a 60 day report, keep in mind is that if you only made that change a week ago, you have seven weeks of the old A cost and one week of the new A cost. And so you may want to periodically compare a 60 day view with a what happened in the last week. Um, not, not including the most recent 48 hours, as most of you are already aware, Amazon has a delay in the sales and orders 
in the first 48 hours. And so don't optimize on data that is less than 48 hours old. Otherwise it's going to look like you're not making any sales and it's, that's going to be skewed. I can, I can discuss that later on. Um, give me, give me kind of, give me a, uh, all right, let me change it up here. Give me a three in the chat. If this is making sense, give me a zero. If we need to go over this a little bit more. Okay, a majority of you are saying that it's making enough sense that you can move forward, right? You can obviously take a screenshot of this um, and, and save it for later. Um, a couple of you did say zero and that's totally cool. That's just a normal part of the learning curve of, of you know, working on, in the Amazon space. I'll try to get back to those. Certainly join me over at the Amazon PPC troubleshooting group inside of Facebook. Uh, those kind of questions, you'll get a ton of, of friendly uh, participation, including myself in, in that group as well. If you've got some of those questions along with some of the, the basic training resources that I've got there as well. So we've reached the point, don't head off yet because I obviously I wanna talk about the, uh, uh, the Stripe, uh, not the Stripe, the, um, <laughs> the top, I'm gonna, I, I totally lost it. I totally, totally uh, forgot. Uh, the, the top ad placement, <laughs> it's basically the top Stripe uh, ad placement on Amazon that, that was changed this week. So as a quick recap here, these were my three most critical keyword optimization steps that surprisingly even long-term sellers have forgotten to do. And especially things like the irrelevant keywords that they need to come back and review again, you know, back to basics, right? So um, let me let me kind of recap here. I'm going to give another bump here um, regarding uh, the PPC scope high because I've had a bunch of you say, hey, can you give me some more information about that? So let me kind of go through that a little bit. I already had the slides put together here. And then we'll talk about that, uh, the ad placement and then some of your open questions. And then we'll try to wrap this up here in the next um, 15 minutes, let's say, okay? So that way, you know, kind of, you get a feel that this is not gonna go on forever. It's gonna be a pretty, pretty short workshop as I've been trying to make these training workshops be. So um, what we really covered today though, um, isn't of course the full picture, especially if you're, you know, in your first, if you just got started recently, there's a whole lot more. It's not even close as far as what we covered. We were just covering some of the most basic essentials on this, as far as advertising on Amazon. Now, um, I told you back at the beginning of this webinar that the optimization steps were a weekly process, right? So uh, let's add a few more things to that list here. So you've got uh, things like uh, things that you should be doing on a regular basis, and that includes uh, auditing your campaigns, uh, conversion rate based bid optimization, budget reviews and revisions, uh, keyword and search term research and optimization, not just keywords. Negative keyword research, of course, um, and then ongoing campaign effectiveness. Now, all of this, if you haven't done all this, if you haven't put your plan of action together and you got your tempo ready, then you'll know that this can take hours of your time each week that you probably should be spending somewhere else, right? So uh, it's probably start, uh, might feel a little bit overwhelming, but that's kind of one of the reasons why I had opened with this whole human intelligence service uh, because I wanted to showcase this. Now. Um, in the past, my agency, Canopy Management, has only been able to offer PPC management services to medium and large Amazon brands. We work with fantastic brands. We love them. Uh, it's, an, it's a pleasure to, to, to work with them. And, and these, that's the level that we would love to see you get to. And we know you can. Um, it's, sometimes it just takes time and effort, right? Now, because our canopy cadence or our process um, is so thorough and so in-depth when it comes to our, our clients, it simply is not a good fit for every brand, right? We do have to definitely turn away a lot of brands um, that we would love to be able to help, but we just we have to stay focused on where our where our best results are in order to continue to, to deliver phenomenal results for those medium to large uh, Amazon brands. But startup brands, those who are have, have gotten established, you're not in your, necessarily in your first product, um, but you have reached a point where you've gotten, you know, maybe you're selling more than 5,000 a month uh, per month on average sales, but you're growing, right? You're, you're excited to be growing. Um, you still don't need everything that Canopy Management 
uh, is capable of doing. You don't need that level of service, right? That's a premium level of service there. So one of the reasons why we wanted to roll this out is because I had way too many people where I felt it just bugging the heck out of me that I couldn't help them. And so we rolled out PPC scope, human intelligence or HI, right? This is kind of a counterpoint to the AI software that uh, has very mixed results out there. So this is a 100% done for you PPC management service designed to take PPC off your plate and increase the profitability of your campaigns, but it's tuned to provide the level of service that is correct for your size of business the way it is now. And we wanna help you grow from there. So what we've done is uh, we've re-engineered our processes that we use with the agency, right? And we've we've focused it down into the most critical that are uh, the, the absolute needed processes that are applicable to uh, brands of this size that are doing at least 5,000 a month, ideally 5,000 to maybe 30,000 per month is typically the kind of the appropriate range here, right, for this. Um, and we don't have all the extra bells and whistles that go along with it, but, but it definitely, you've got an expert team that is actually managing your ads for you, um, at a competitive price. So, um, you still get my optimization process. Um, it's applied to your, your campaigns to maximize profitability, um, uh, just without a lot of this extra extra effort, you know, like you can, you can enjoy that later on when we, you know, we, maybe we upgrade and you, you get to the point where you're ready for like more of the full management services. Um, but this is something we really feel excited about to be able to roll out, to be able to help all these brands that have said, it's like, come on guys, you got to have something where we, you, you, your level of expertise can be applied to our smaller growing brands. We've got other things to do. We need to be sourcing product. We need to be talking to manufacturers. We need to be analyzing for, for a new, I mean, you know how many hours that takes, right? Just to get your first product out the door. Um, so that allows us to drop the price, of course, to make it a better fit for these smaller growing brands that are in this 5,000 to 30,000 monthly revenue range. Okay. Yes. So, um, what we want, what we do here, um, uh, I'm going to ask, uh, Alex, if you're on still, could you put the link for, uh, basically the link out to our site for the PPC scope high, uh, HI service, if you could put that, oh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, this is basically where you can go in and explore and find out if it's a good fit for you, right? Not, not, this is not a hard sell. This is simply just saying, we worked really hard to put PPC scope human intelligence service together for this range of brands in that 5,000 to 30,000 per month revenue range. We think it's a great fit. We certainly know our capabilities to help you maximize your ads. Um, Misha, awesome, cool. I, I, yeah, look forward to talking to you on that. So uh, ideally, this is going to take a lot of stress off your plate by basically handing off to a team that we are constantly on the bleeding edge of what is working in advertising on Amazon. We obviously get advanced notice from our special contacts that we have within Amazon. We're always on the alpha and beta uh, programs. And so we're always on the, on the leading edge as far as what's working in advertising. You, that's not a learning curve that you want, trust me, uh, nor do you have to stay up at night wondering whether or not uh, you're, you're, you're wasting money or feeling guilty that you're not spending the time. Just you can hand it off, right? And, and it's appropriate for this size of business, okay? So, and again, this is my team who's handling this for you, right? So whether you're a smaller brand looking to grow with this kind of professional PPC management, or you're a larger brand that needs a partner you can trust to take over this critical piece of your business, um, I invite you to go to the URL that Alex has put into the chat there for you. It's also the same one here that's on the screen. Um, and my team um, will basically, if you, you will collect some basic information from you and then we'll reach out and say, okay, here's, here's basically what's available. If it's a right fit for you, you can make a choice if it's, it's a good fit for your business. Uh, and then we can move forward and we can take that off your hands and uh, we can get you excited about what can be done when it's professionally managed. So a lot of, I know a lot of you have been kind of hesitant on whether or not that was a good move at this time. Trust me, when you get it off your plate, it will be. Um, the uh, We've had a number of our partners who have gotten... Uh, We've had, we've had partners that we've worked with within the agency that we take it off their plate and they, they're like going, I'm going to go spend two weeks in Bali. 
<laughs> like, good for you. It's like, you know, I haven't taken a vacation in two years. Um, and so now, you know, that's just, you know, it, it's amazing how much it kind of like, triggers the ability of the stress release. But um, they obviously didn't have to learn what we know and what we live and breathe every single day in order to, to keep up with it. So, um, but we obviously want to help you grow and be successful. And we want to help your, your brand and your product line mature and help you get there. Okay. So that's part of the reason we put this together. It's almost kind of a, uh, an incubator service. If you're familiar with incubators for small companies that are trying to explode, that's us. That's what, that's what we're going to kind of help you do. Um, so anyway, so that is basically the offer there. Um, as far as I'll go ahead and leave that link up there. Um, um, page can't be found. Uh, Alex, can you double check the link there? Just kind of make sure that we've got, uh, let me double check here. It is coming up successfully. It may be a browser issue. Um, double check maybe the spelling on it just to make sure. Okay, we've got some people who are saying the link does work. Uh, Nina, if, if um, uh, Alex, if you want to, if you want to connect with with Nina, we'll just put you um, in touch with my team and see if we can try to help you troubleshoot that. Because obviously, we don't, you know, we, we want to make sure that you're uh, you're not getting frustrated here. <laughs> um, yes. All right. So, questions. Oh, um, what I want you to do now, of course, is. Um, the questions that you've got now, now because there's a lot, there's some questions that are way far back in this, and, and the chat window doesn't seem to be expanding for me here. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if your question hasn't been answered already, um, can you add it back into the the chat window related to the topic of the keyword bid optimization? Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to show. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, the top. Uh, Stripe uh, ad. Okay. Um, let me bring this up here. Do, do, do. Um, what's what's a good? I'm trying to think now, but um, let me just see if I can find some random product here and see if one comes up. No, not yet. Hold on here. Um, let me try to find one that has it. There's one. Okay, good. If you can see this uh, this little banner, it's like a little micro banner ad, right? It's obviously smaller than a sponsored brand ad. And this is, a, is an ad that shows up here at the tall. It's obviously smaller right now. It's occupied a lot by Amazon's placements. Historically, as in prior to this week, this was something that was only available through those who are on the enterprise ad platform that Amazon has called uh, demand side platform or what they call DSP. Now. Fun fact is that Canopy Management, my agency, is actually one of the authorized agencies that can self-manage DSP. For some of you who may have looked at DSP in the past, Amazon said, great, we can manage it for you. We can drive up your ad spend. It's only going to have you commit to $35,000 per month in ad spend. We don't have those kind of requirements. We, we, we want the successful, we want to obviously make it profitable for you. But we can actually manage the DSP for you without that high ad spend. Those are typically appropriate for if your brand is selling, like, say, 30000 per month or more. DSP is, if you're not currently using it, you're missing a huge opportunity. Now, this ad is not just DSP, okay? That's not what I was trying to bring up here. This is actually a sponsored display ad. Now, before this week, this was targeted, this, uh, this little ad stripe up here was only available for DSP. As of this week, um, they, they released it so that if you create a sponsored display ad, you gotta be brand registered, of course. If you create a sponsored display ad, a product targeting ad, okay? So not a view, not a, an audience ad, but actual product targeting ad within the sponsored display ad type in ad console. And here is the critical difference. In order for your, your ad to qualify to show here, you have to use a custom logo, custom title in that product targeting ad in order for it to show here. Otherwise it won't qualify. Now you can't specifically target this ad on its own. It's not like say, I only wanna show ads on this one thing. 
there's other placements, uh, you know, like the ad, underneath the add to cart button, for instance, where a sponsored display, um, where a sponsored display product targeting ad can show. But this other one is just now opened up so that if you are using the custom creative uh, of a product targeting ad within sponsored display ads, then your ad can qualify to show up here. Now, here's the exciting thing about that is most of sellers, 99% of your competitors don't know that they've got this ability yet because they weren't on this webinar, right? Fools. <laughs> um, so if you've got access to sponsored display ad, go out there, create a sponsored display, product targeting ad, make sure that you add in the custom creative and that will then allow your ad to show to be included uh, when it makes sense and it's relevant, of course, onto these kinds of things. This is a great way to do, to set up like an additional defense ad. Uh, those of you who have been part of my students or my clients know that we go through and we'll create things like uh, product uh, defense ads in order to defend space below the bullet points and below the add to cart and some of these other spaces down below here. Um, this is yet one more opportunity for you to kind of defend your ad space and keep that shopper on your listing or even better, you can cross promote one of your other products and you can also use this on a competitor's product. Um, and so you can target a competitor and steal market share, which I, I know you've hopefully been on one of my workshops where I've talked about stealing market share. <laughs> that is also fun for me. Um, okay, so um, Adam says he can't see my screen. Did everybody else, everybody else can see my screen, yeah? We can't see the placement we're on. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Hold on here. Uh, got it. Let me reshare here. Let me know in the chat there if you can see this page now. All good now. Good, good. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that it wasn't showing. I, I had opened up a new tab and apparently Zoom was stuck on the previous tab. Okay, so just kind of recap here. This little mini, it looks like a little mini sponsored brand headline ad, but it's actually what they call a top, uh, am I using the right term? Only top stripe um, ad. And this is something that was previously um, like this is the one that is exciting toys for every budget. You can actually own that new ad space because it is no longer just DSP ad space, but it's also sponsored display product targeting with the custom creative enabled. Okay. That's the critical thing right there that most people would miss is you've got to have the custom creative enabled on that product targeting ad in order for your listing, your ad to qualify to show here. Great way to defend your listing or to have it as an offensive ad on somebody else's uh, product listing. Yeah, I love those kinds of things because that's how we increase market share. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we've definitely, with the agency is definitely, that, that's fun when we do that as we turn around, you know, you get, you get brands that we start working with at the agency level that have been declining year over year because their competitors have been stealing their market share. We turn it around and we take that market share back. It's fantastic. We, we celebrate those wins. Um, all right. So let me kind of grab a couple of these uh, questions really quick. And then I've got to wrap it up because I've got a hard stop in about five minutes. So um do, do, do. replay yes there'll be a replay and that replay will be available um for the next week we typically post that up into like say the amazon ppc troubleshooting group and of course if you signed up for this uh workshop then you'll get emailed the replay link as well that way you can take a look at it um mm -hmm. uh, alex said that uh, oh okay I, i'm sorry alex actually you already answered that one cool um, as far as uh, the canopy management uh, Facebook page also. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, ba -ba -bum. Okay, it looks like I've got all the replay questions done. Uh, Pearl, uh, question keywords in broad campaign. Okay, that looks like a very specific example that you would have posted up into the Amazon PPC troubleshooting group too, right? Um, would you, what would you suggest for this broad keyword related to the three optimization, keyword optimization steps I'm talking about? Um, you definitely optimize on a weekly basis. Yes. Uh, date range is still the 60 day that I've been teaching here um, today. Um, what is a 30 day report seven day total? So seven day is, um, that's seven day attribution. In other words, Amazon on, let's say sponsored product ads, seven day attribution 
is not is basically saying that any sales that came in within seven days of the original ad click will get credited, will get added into that that uh, that count. Now, what that means is that if you go in, um, if the click came in uh, two days ago and you look at the report, you're going to have sales that are related to that click. But if more sales come in over the next five days for a full seven days, if you go and look at it next week, you're going to see a bigger number of right? Because it's, it would have accumulated across seven days and it's constantly updating that report. So the seven day attribution is just saying it's going to include the sales metrics of any sale that came through as a result of a click within seven days of the click. It's not like it's only showing one week or anything. Um, on sponsored brand ads, that's actually a 14 day attribution. So they give you a little bit more room uh, to report on that makes it even more confusing that way, right? <laughs> um, the same adjustments that rules apply to broad phrase and exact keywords. Absolutely. It's based on the metrics, not on the individual match types that you are uh, testing. Okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. If I'm using the keyword type broad, does Amazon take care of plural and singular? Well, Amazon will match up a plural and a singular. In other words, they'll mix and match those. Um, they'll, they'll match up a, a plural search term to a singular keyword. They'll match up a singular search term to a plural keyword. They'll match up a singular plural, a singular uh, search term to a singular keyword. You get the point. Um, that applies whether it's broad phrase or exact. It does not matter. Um, yeah. There's actually a lot of flexibility with an exact match that um, most people don't realize that it, how, how flexible it actually still is, even though it's you know supposedly exact. It can actually you can have an exact match keyword that has a dozen search term, different search terms that are attached to it. So um, that's that's for a different day. Uh -huh. Um, YG says, uh, don't your nine steps for optimization. Yeah. If you've got the full nine step checklist that we have inside of uh, PPC scope, as well as, uh, the troubleshooting group, achieve the goals of identifying underperforming keywords, eliminating waste ad spend, keyword irrelevance. Absolutely. Yes. These are elements that came out of that, but I picked out the, 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 the three most critical ones that are most commonly uh, overlooked, but are absolutely make the biggest difference on a weekly basis. So yes, um, that is strictly just optimization. That doesn't have to do with expansion. Expansion obviously is uh, evolving, uh, converting search terms and, and converting keywords and converting ASINs and that kind of stuff. So that's uh, that's more the expansion training that we'll be rolling out for um, our um, uh, PPC scope users too. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Looking for other questions here that have not been answered. Uh, um, using negative keywords on exact match and ASIN targeting, does it make sense? Yes, definitely. Um, yep, we use those on a regular basis. Um, you didn't used to be able to actually do negative ASINs, but Amazon has, has had that off and on. Uh, for the past four years, four or five years now, um, but they just recently brought that back again. So like say in automatic campaigns, you can actually negative match um, an ASIN. Um, you can also do that through things like PPC scope as well through the software. Uh, why not just reduce the bid to like 10 cents rather than negate an exact keyword? You cannot negate an exact keyword. That actually applies to search terms, not to keywords. So two different, two different things. Um, Yes, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I was recommending that you should be uh, optimizing your search terms before you're optimizing your keywords. But ultimately on things like when there's zero sales in a keyword, everything included is also going to have zero, zero uh, sales as well. Uh, let's see here. I love that. Alex. Thank you so much. Shout out to Alex. Um, let's give a round of applause. Alex has, has responded to so many of your questions related to replay and Facebook group and the link to the, the, the PPC scope uh, high offer. Um, and I'm not sure if that's, if the link is showing there again now, but um, hopefully it's showing again the offer page for PPC scope high. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, how long do I need to wait to reduce? Typically, I would only do it once a week. If you've got, there's, there's some people in some software that say, oh, you should do this, you know, five times a day. That's just ridiculous. That's just, yeah, don't believe that. That's just, that's, that's a marketing gimmick because you're not going to have the data available from Amazon in order to optimize that often. You're not going to have enough data to optimize on, uh, you know, within 70, you know, within 48 hours let alone, you know, that's one of the reasons why most cases you can get away with it in a week. In very, very rare occasions, occasions where you've got a very large account that just has massive amount of ad spend on a daily basis, yeah, we, we can definitely step that up um, in, in order to make sure that we're not even losing pennies in some cases. But that's probably a very rare situation that um, maybe only a couple of you have ever run into. Um, <laughs> All right. Last couple of questions here. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Lisa, you, you mentioned a question regarding the last training you mentioned about advertising keywords on categories versus keywords. Um, yeah, so targets can include um, auto targeting groups and auto, you've got keyword in manual campaigns, you've got keyword targets, you have product targets and you have category targets. Um, a pro tip that I had on that is categories um, usually don't perform that well, but if you have a product that is prime ready, use the filter option on your category targeting to do non-prime. So in other words, where you basically are offering, you're showing your prime product on non-prime competitors and you'll get an advantage, especially during the holidays here. So that's kind of my, my insider pro tip for you. <laughs> um, use same keywords and exact phrase and broad for a new product. Yeah, generally what I'll do is um, I'll start out with something like phrase match because it's gonna get the most traffic. Um, and then I will also test converting keywords in exact and broad um, because you can get different performance um, on each of these. And usually what I'll do is I'll circle back around. Actually, I always I'll, I'll circle back around and I'll eliminate the, the lower performing one or two of those. Um, there's, a, there's a common myth out there that you should migrate from broad over to phrase and then from phrase over to exact and then negate, negate along the way. That's primarily built, that's primarily taught by those who um, want to simplify the work but it usually, you know, you end up usually losing probably 23, 20, 30% of your potential sales by doing it that way. That is usually set up by the software because it's easier for the software to manage when you've got things like AI systems. It doesn't want to complicate things. That's one of the reasons why the human intelligence side of things is, is better to do because we look at the context, not simply just the, the numbers. And we don't try to make it easy for us. We try to make it correct for you and your brand and your product. Um, all right, so last couple of questions here. Uh, last question, actually. Daniela, you got the winner on this one. I noticed that some keywords may collect thousands of impressions and very few clicks if the ad is placed on lower pages, three or four, but the same keyword gets a good click to rate if ads placed on page one or two. That's the same concept when it comes to things like top of search placement, uh, which has been overpopularized, but it is worth testing. If you see the metrics where your ad placement on a, on a campaign where you've got a higher conversion rate on like say a top of search placement, or uh, then you probably want to emphasize a bit, you want to emphasize that top of search placement. I'm talking like 20%, 50% and most. Don't go crazy and go 200 plus percent. Just do like 20, 20%, 50%. Do those kind of tests to see if it pays off, right? Uh, so there's kind of like op, uh, opportunities that you that you leverage when you see that kind of outlier data where there's a significant improvement in conversion rate it, uh, on certain placements. That's the same thing with any, any kind of optimization with match types, with the, the uh, ad type that you're running with the, uh, the campaign bidding strategy that you're using with the ad placement that you're using. If you observe that there's an outlier where you have one specific one, um, another one would be the, the targeting groups inside of automatic campaigns, same kind of concept. If you find that one of those is outperforming all the rest, do what you can to emphasize that and test to see how far you can push it to maximize the result there. Um, 
same keyword gets a good click through rate if it has played. Could you please confirm? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, so conversion rate is always the first metric I'm gonna look at and then followed by click through rate and orders kind of in a combination um, there. But conversion rate is always drives a lot of my decisions because I know that if I can improve the conversion rate, that means I am also going to reduce my A costs and increase my profitability, which is one of my favorite goals. Um, and the clarification on that is, um, uh, Paul, as far as uh, small brands uh, with only one ASIN, I do support them from a standpoint of the training and the PPC scope software. PPC scope high is generally designed for those brands that are currently selling, even with one product, currently selling between five to $30,000 per month already. And then of course, canopy management, my agency, typically if you're over that, then, then it's appropriate for that kind of a full service, kind of the, the mega service of canopy management. Um, and so that kind of gives you a range. So um, you've got kind of the, the, the do-it-yourself tools with PPC Scope and of course the do-it-yourself training that's available on PPC Scope and the Facebook group, of course. Um, definitely jump into those because that'll give you a clear guideline of what you can do, do on your own um, with that one product. Continue to build it. I'm excited to see what you do with it. Um, Mohammed, I'm so I'm so late for the next one here. Uh, when you're running keywords on exact and phrase, Cedric, do you negative on the on the rest matches? No, that's kind of what I just covered. So um, no, I don't, because um, I'm not an isolationist like that. I prefer to actually get the sales rather than make it simple for software to use or make it uh, easier, uh, you know, simplified. It certainly it can work where you might get higher conversion rates, and it can work. But you, again, you should be doing some testing. Um, to see which match types perform best for your converting keywords and then focus in on those. It's part of my bigger training is the whole focus process of focusing your advertising to what is performing best, eliminating the rest that is not performing as well or not at all, and then making sure I'm always focusing my ads towards my target audience, tighter and tighter toward my target audience, so I continue to increase my click-through rate, my conversion rate, my profitability, it's a nice little loop that we get into. Awesome. Okay. We're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for, for, for being with me today. If this has been your first time, please let me know if you're going to come back to the next one. We have these every couple of weeks and uh, I'm glad that you are here. Really appreciate it. Also shout out to, to my own team, Mike and Alex for help me, for the assist here uh, and uh, giving support to each of you that were on here today. Uh, I love these. You can probably tell in the excitement of my voice. This I'm a geek when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I'm excited to to uh, talk to you in the future and uh, try to have this <laughs> workshop every week. Uh, you know what? I, I know that we're certainly trying to work on it. Uh, we'll, uh, but yes, um, yeah, we're actually working on a whole lot more content when it comes to training and stuff. So you'll be seeing that very soon as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic day and the rest of your week. And thank you for being here. We'll talk to you soon.